Hello, welcome to our discussion of a means. A means are generally said to be compounds of general formula RNH2. So the general formula in a means is said to be RNH2 and the functional group is the NH2, the amino group. Now that's not very accurate because there are different kinds of a means and um, what we have just mentioned now is only applicable to one group of a means. So maybe it would be more appropriate to say that a means are compounds obtained by replacing one or more of the hydrogens in an ammonia molecule using alkyl groups. So when hydrogens in ammonia are replaced by alkyl groups, we get a means. Now here's ammonia. Ammonia is NH3 and of course right there we have a lone pair. The lone pair present on the nitrogen is what makes ammonia a base, of course. Now this ammonia, if you compare it with the compounds down here, the formulas I have written under, you see that in this case only one hydrogen has been so far replaced and then the other two hydrogens are intact. Such is an amine. In this other case, we have two hydrogens already replaced, that's still an amine. Then in that case, we have all hydrogens replaced. So those are amines. But we call this kind of amine a primary amine. Then we call this other one a secondary amine. And we call the third one a tertiary amine. It means therefore that in a tertiary amine, the nitrogen has no hydrogens present, no hydrogens attached to it. But in a secondary amine, the nitrogen has one hydrogen, whereas in a primary amine, the nitrogen still has two hydrogens intact, which means the initial definition applies to primary amines. So RNH3 is the general formula for primary amines, where the functional group, of course, becomes NH2. But within reasonable limits, we just take that to be the general formula of amines. Now, the lone pair that makes ammonia a base is still present in the amines themselves. So you see, therefore, that amines are generally going to function as bases. Now, there are a number of factors that determine the strengths of amines. But even before we begin to talk about those factors, I'd like you to know that Amines are generally stronger bases than ammonia. So ammonia is not as strong as any of the classes of amines. All three classes are stronger than ammonia. But there's also this amine that we call aniline or aminobenzene. It is drawn like this. So you have that ring and then you have NH2 on top. This is called aminobenzene or aniline. Now aniline is not as strong as ammonia. The reason behind all of those um, inductive effects can be used to explain, but for time's sake, I'll leave all of that out. So it means I'm saying that amines are stronger than ammonia, and ammonia is stronger than aniline, which is an aromatic amine. Then among the amines themselves, the general sequence um, of their relative strengths is written as Secondary is greater than primary is greater than tertiary, which means of the three classes of amines, the secondary amines are the strongest bases, followed by the primary amines, and then finally the tertiary amines. So that's how their, that's how their strength varies. Now, leaving their strengths, leaving how the strengths of amines vary, the next thing we're going to talk about now is how amines are named. How do we name amines? To name amines, well, we have the IUPAC method and then we have the trivial nomenclature. I'll show you these using a few amines. I'm going to draw a few amines now and those ones I'm going to draw I will name. Now see this amine. Let's start from something very simple. Let's say we write this amine. If you were to name this amine, you'd simply call it <coughs> Metal, that's the CH3, and then amine, which is the NH2. Or you name it the other way around, so you start with the NH2. In that case, you are going to write amino, 
and then the CH3 is representative of an alkane called methane. Remember, if I were to draw this for you, you would call it methane. This is methane, CH4. Now, if I remove one H and put Cl, you would either call it methyl chloride or chloromethane. So in like manner, if I remove the Cl and put NH2, then you either call it methylamine or aminomethane. So that's how I'm able to name this compound, which has that structure. Now, the name ending in amine is the trivial name, whereas the name ending in methane or alkane, any of the alkane, is the IUPAC name. So for this compound, I've given its trivial name and then its IUPAC name. See this other one, which is the next amine in line. We we'll write it as CH3, CH2, NH2. For this one, you will call it ethylamine, ethylamine, or you say aminoethane. Now, if I may ask, which of those two names would be the IUPAC name? Yes, that's correct, aminoethane. That's the IUPAC name, but ethylamine is trivial. Now, leaving those two, leaving those two terms, look at this next one. See this next one? Um, this one would have something for us. So this is NH2 now. And I would want us to compare that one with this one. If you look at these two amines now, you are going to call this one amino propane. Aminopropane as per, what you are looking at there is C3H7NH2. Then, if you don't call it aminopropane, you may call it propylamine. Propylamine. But this first name, aminopropane, is incomplete, and I'll tell you why. It is incomplete because, unlike the two carbon chain, in this two carbon chain, anywhere I put my amino is carbon 1. If I put it on this carbon, this carbon is number one. If I put it on the other carbon, it becomes number one. So in any case, aminoethane is one aminoethane. I mean, there's only one type of aminoethane. But for aminopropane, there can be two types of it. See this now, it is aminopropane, and that's also aminopropane. So what's the difference now? We'll call this one aminopropane, whereas we call that one two aminopropane. So this is two aminopropane, whereas that is one aminopropane. And for this two aminopropane, its other name will be secondary propyl amine. Now, don't let that name mislead you. The secondary there is not there because the amine is secondary. The amine is actually primary. We said earlier that a primary amine would have two hydrogens attached to the end, which is what we are seeing here. Once there's NH2, it's primary. So this is a primary amine, not a secondary amine. But the sec there is descriptive of the alkyl group. The alkyl group that is present is a secondary alkyl group. If you are familiar with alcohols, Think of what happens if you remove this NH2 and replace it with OH. What kind of alcohol will you have? A secondary alcohol. That's because the alkyl group in that case is a secondary alkyl group. So a secondary alkyl group is one where the carbon bearing the functional group is attached to two other carbons like this. Unlike here now, see the carbon bearing the functional group. How many other carbons is it attached to? One. So this is a primary alkyl group, but that's a secondary alkyl group. That's why I call that compound sec propyl amine. Now let's add a few more. Let's draw some more structures and try to name them. This next one is CH3, CH2, N, CH3, and H. By trivial nomenclature, trivial, what I'll just do is name the alkyl groups that are present and add amine. You know, in this case, we just said propyl amine. So propyl group with amine. 
but in this case I am going to say ethyl methyl amine ethyl methyl amine or I could say N metal this is actually the correct thing N metal ethylamine I beg your pardon why this is more correct why this is the correct one is if you were to name an amine by trivial nomenclature which is what I'm doing here you will look at the alkyl groups that are present on the N then the longest one among them is the one that is given preference. That one becomes the parent chain. So if this is methyl and this is ethyl, so it means ethyl is the one that will take the amine. So that's why I have ethylamine. But this my ethylamine has a methyl group. And where is that methyl group located? On the N. That's why I have N methyl ethylamine. So what if what if this were uh, let's say CH3, CH2, CH2, N, CH3, and H. Then it would have been N metal propylamine. But in this case, in the original case we have there, we have N metal ethylamine. But what would be its IUPAC name? What's the IUPAC name for this compound? We see it as, though, if this CH3 were not there, imagine removing this CH3, then you have H there. The compound would have been amino ethane. But with this CH3 present, this group can no longer be called amino. It will now be called methylamino. So this is methylamino ethane. So I'll write the name here as methylamino Ethane. That's the name. Metal amino ethane. I'll draw one last structure and um, I'm hoping that this last structure would be, uh, should I say, very much encompassing because many of the other structures we are able to draw may not cover as much details as we would have loved them to. So let's draw something like this. So this is N, this is um, C2H5 and this is CH3. And then we have CH3 here as well. So if I were to name these compounds by trivial nomenclature, by IUPAC nomenclature, what would it be? Now, trivially first, trivially, which of these alkyl groups is the biggest? That's the first question I'll ask myself. And the answer is this one. That's the biggest. Now, this alkyl group that's the biggest, what do we call it? It's pentyl, actually. But that pentyl does not have all carbons in a straight chain. So it becomes isopentyl. So I'm going to end the name as isopentyl amine. So isopentyl amine. Then that isopentyl amine has two branches or two um, substituents, which are ethyl and methyl, and they are both located on the N. So alphabetically now I'm going to write N, ethyl, then N metal so that this becomes the full trivial name. But what about the IUPAC name? What would the IUPAC name be? In that case, I am going to write for the IUPAC name now. This would be my carbon one, this is carbon two, this is three, and this is four. Now on carbon two, I have metal, but on carbon one, I have a complex group. Now, once again, if these two were HH, it would simply have been one amino, two metal, putane. That would have been the name. So, without this, remove everything to the right of my hand and remove this CH3. You have butane. So, butane now has methyl on carbon two and an amino group on carbon one. But the amino group on carbon one has substituents. So what are we going to call that amino group? That amino group will be called, so we have one, ethyl, methyl, amino. So it's not ordinary amino. Instead it is 
ethyl methyl amino that's what we call that group on carbon one then on carbon two we have methyl and then finally i'll add butane now the truth is if we were to name um, amines the list will be endless there are different kinds of amines that we can name even derivatives of aniline but as we proceed as we look at reactions of amines, methods of making amines, some of these other nomenclatures, some of the names of the other amines will also be made. The aromatic amines, this is the principal member or the chief representative, we call it aniline. Aniline is also called aminobenzene. Aminobenzene, so aminobenzene is also called aniline. And we can have different derivatives of this aniline. But moving on from aniline, this compound is of interest in that it has both the amino group and the met excuse me, the metal group. Now a compound that has both the amino and the metal groups like this is referred to as a toluidine. So this is toluidine, this is also toluidine. But the difference is that we'll call this autotoluidine, auto based on the one to arrangement, then this is metatoluidine, and of course you can picture what paratoluidine will be like. Paratoluidine has a metal group opposite the NH2 group, that's paratoluidine. Then see this guy, that's a tertiary amine. How do I know it's tertiary? It's tertiary in that. The N or nitrogen there does not have any hydrogens attached. So we can say it's a tertiary aromatic amine. Its name is NN dimethyl aniline. NN dimethyl aniline. So it's a prime oh, I'm sorry, a tertiary aromatic amine. Then this guy, this last one here. If we were to name it, what would we call it? Well, we could see it as propane, because from here to there, what you have is actually propane. If you make this CH3 and that CH3, it's propane. But this propane has a minor on carbon 1 and phenyl on carbon 3. So I may call it 1, a minor, 3, phenyl, then propane. Or... If I were to name it as an amine, I will call it phenyl propyl amine. In other words, I am naming this whole group as a phenyl propyl group. So phenyl propyl amine, or I will call it a 1 amino 3 phenyl propane. Any of those names will apply to this compound. So that's about nomenclature of amines. In the next video, I'll talk about preparation of amines, different methods of making amines. And then after that, there'll be a third video that will talk about reactions that amines undergo. But in the meantime, remember to like, to subscribe, and to share. The channel name is Dr. Quinty. And um, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.